Nearly 50 years ago, this man discovered that I am his brother. Bill, that's not one of the great discoveries, is it? No, no, that's a joke. Yes, it's a joke. Jeez. No, no, not jeez. Genes. When we're conceived, we inherit the genetic characteristics of our parents. But how are those characteristics transmitted from one generation to the next? That's our first great discovery. In the middle of the 19th century, an Augustinian monk named Gregor Mendel took up the question of biological inheritance with a series of experiments. Mendel had a naturally inquisitive mind and a profound love of nature. His scientific interests ranged from research on plants to meteorology and the theories of evolution. Working at a monastery in what is now the Czech Republic, Mendel started by crossbreeding different strains of garden peas, then observing the characteristics of their offspring. Why choose peas? He did it, he said, for the fun of the thing. Mendel noticed that when he crossed a round pea seed with a wrinkled one, the offspring were round, not a mix of the two characteristics as he had expected. Yet when he bred the round pea offspring, that's where the mix appeared and the second generation had both round and wrinkled seeds. He continued to experiment, trying to understand what kind of biological mechanism would cause certain characteristics to disappear in the first generation, only to reappear in the second. Then one day, Mendel counted the number of peas in the second generation that had the wrinkled characteristic. Exactly one quarter of the peas were wrinkled. What Mendel observed in his experiments were the biological phenomena we now refer to as dominance and segregation. Only Mendel didn't know it yet. Still, his experiments produced a curious set of facts which, as he said, forced themselves upon my notice. You see, no matter how he crossbred the various strains of peas, the hidden characteristics showed up, but only in one quarter of the second generation. For Mendel, here was the breakthrough. For the first time, he could demonstrate that the traits of successive generations were inherited in certain numerical ratios. In other words, there were fixed laws of nature that governed heredity. With this insight, Mendel made the first great discovery in the science of genetics. Each inherited characteristic must be decided by a pair of what he called factors. Each parent, he said, contributes one factor for each characteristic. Certain factors are dominant and others recessive, depending on the combination of the factors the offspring inherits. And Mendel's factors are called genes. The term Mendelian trait is used to describe a characteristic caused by a single gene that sometimes reappears in one quarter of the offspring. That characteristic can be innocuous, such as freckles or the ability to curl your tongue. But it also can lead to serious illnesses like cystic fibrosis or Tay-Sachs disease. Imagine all that from one man's work with the humble pea and was experiments with another humble species that produced our next great discovery. Meet Drosophila melanogaster, the common fruit fly. Its role in genetics research is as important today as it was over a century ago. See, in the early 1900s, scientists began to re-examine Mendel's work on inherited traits. And in 1909, a Danish botanist named Wilhelm Johansson coined the term genes to describe Mendel's factors. Among the researchers in the new field of genetics was Thomas Hunt Morgan, an independent-minded Columbia University embryologist. In his early work, Morgan was critical of Mendel's conceptions of heredity and even skeptical of Darwin's theory of natural selection. That is, until Morgan started working with Drosophila. Like to ask you Joseph Gall is a cell biologist at the Carnegie Institution in Baltimore, Maryland. Why did Morgan choose fruit flies? What was going on? Well, I think he chose fruit flies for several reasons, the chief of which were the short generation time so that's very important. The other important thing is that one female fly can give uh, several hundred offspring. 
So to do genetics, first of all, you need a lot of data. You mm -hmm. need a lot of flies, a lot of individuals. And you don't want to wait forever to get them. You can have many generations per year and thousands and thousands of offspring. The story goes that one day, shortly after Morgan started breeding Drosophila for his experiments, a striking mutant appeared in his lab, a fly with distinctive white eyes. He decided to breed it with a female fly that had ordinary red eyes, curious to see what the offspring would look like. Two weeks later, he had his answer. One by one, the first generation offspring appeared. All of them had red eyes. Thinking that the white eyes might be a hidden characteristic similar to what Mendel had observed, Morgan waited to see what would happen in the second generation. Sure enough, the characteristic skipped a generation. This time, some of the flies had red eyes and some had white eyes. But then Morgan saw something else. All of the flies with white eyes were male. At the time, it was known that the gender of a species is determined by two of the rod-shaped structures found in the cell nucleus, the chromosomes. For example, human females have two X chromosomes. Human males have one X chromosome and one Y chromosome. Morgan realized that the gene responsible for the white eyes must somehow be associated with the fact that male flies have only one X chromosome. This meant that in the females, the gene responsible for red eyes on one of the X chromosomes might be overshadowing the gene for white eyes on the other. To prove his point, Morgan bred thousands of fruit flies and studied their inheritance. Morgan's observations were absolutely fundamental to everything about genetics because what Morgan and his students showed was that the genes are located in a linear order on the chromosomes. Today, geneticists know that diseases like hemophilia and muscular dystrophy are caused by defective genes on the X chromosome. It's believed that other diseases like cancer may be linked to damaged or defective chromosomes. For his discovery, Morgan was awarded the Nobel Prize for Medicine in 1933, the first scientist to win it in the field of genetics. And Drosophila melanogaster? Thanks to the fruit fly's contribution to Morgan's work, Drosophila is enshrined as one of the basic animal models in experimental science. And its legacy led to our next great discovery. One of the geneticists who studied fruit flies alongside Morgan was George Beetle. Working in Paris in 1935, Beetle detected evidence that the inherited trait of eye color in Drosophila might be the result of genetically based chemical reactions. Beetle pursued his investigations at Stanford University with colleague Edward Tatum. For their experiments, Beetle and Tatum selected another simple organism. Neurospora crassa, bread mold. They chose mold because it was easy to grow with simple nutritional needs, bread, air, and water. Neurospora also had a single set of chromosomes, which allowed the researchers to observe genetic changes easily. Knowing that X-rays damaged the chromosomes, Beetle and Tatum irradiated the mold, which caused mutations in the genes of its spores these mutant genes were unable to produce the nutrients necessary for the mold to grow. However, when they added the nutrients, some of the spores began to germinate. For Beetle and Tatum, this was a breakthrough moment. They realized that the irradiated spores failed to produce the essential nutrients because their genes were defective. This was significant. It meant that genes were responsible for more than just passing inherited traits from one generation to the next. They also directed the production of enzymes that the mold depended on for its survival. Beetle and Tatum's breakthrough is known as the one gene, one enzyme hypothesis. 
Lactose intolerance is an example of a human metabolic condition caused by a single missing enzyme. Missing because some people have inherited a gene that fails to produce lactase and are unable to digest the sugar in dairy products. This disorder can be easily treated by taking tablets containing the missing enzyme. Thanks to Beetle and Tatum, we gained a fundamental understanding of what genes do, and the stage was set for a new generation of remarkable genetic discoveries.